This is lesson 9.2 and we're going to be talking about optimizing volume. So this is just a continuation of the last lesson and that's why I'm going to start off with example number four. Uh, optimizing volume goes through the same steps as optimizing area. It's just a different formula. You're not using an area formula. You're now using a volume formula. And we had said in the last video that it makes a lot of sense in the industry where you want to maximize the space inside of your container. So we had used the example of Coca-Cola. You want to have the Coca-Cola in there, but you want to minimize the surface area because you don't want to have to pay for the materials that make the actual can. So this is where we optimize um, something a little bit different, which is just your volume and surface area. Okay, so example number four. A piece of sheet metal, 60 centimeters by 30 centimeter, is to be used to make a rectangular box with an open top. Find the dimensions that will give you the box with the largest volume. So they want to optimize or maximize that volume. You can take a sheet metal and they said 60 by 30. Okay, so here's your 60 and here's your 30. And what you can do is you can cut out like these squares in the corners. And so we're just going to call that X. Um, and so this length is going to be the same as this length. And so that's just an x squared that you're going to rip off the end. Okay, and you're going to take that off of each one of the ends because if you were to um, just take this dotted end and fold it, this side would then become this side right here. So you're folding it up and these two would attach and they would become this part. That is after you actually removed this. So if you cut that off. And you can do that to each one. I mean, again, this flap right here is just going to become this flap at the back and so on. Okay, so we want to find the largest volume, which means that we have to figure out the volume formula. So it should make sense that if the entire side from here all the way to here is 60 and you're going to subtract off these two ends. So what I can do is just show you, I'm going to cut off this part I'm going to cut off this part. It means that I've taken the 60 and I've removed the two X's to actually get just this part. So not all the way to the ends, just the flap, like the length of the flap. And that'll give you this portion right here. So 60 minus 2X. And you can do the same thing, like since this is 30, you can erase off or cut out both of those X's. And then you would get just this part right here, which is... 30 minus 2x. Okay, so since we have the length, the width, we also have the height, because remember, that is this part right here, the actual height of the box, once you fold it and put it together, you now have all three dimensions of your box, and it has no top. Okay, so we're going to let x represent the dimensions of those square corners, and that means the length has to be 60 minus 2x, and the width is 30 minus 2x. So we actually don't have many different letters here because we know that the volume is length times width times height, and that's an issue having four different letters. But by knowing that you know your height is going to be x, right? This one is x right here. You know your width, you know your length, and all of them can be written with x's. You actually only have two letters. So you don't have to use the constraint formulas in order to eliminate one of those letters that we did in the last video. You actually already only have two sets of letters. So this is perfect. Now you can actually focus on what the constraint is actually for. The constraint is for telling you, you know, what can X be and what can't X be? So what can, what range I should say, or what domain does X actually exist? So obviously, if you're talking about the height, the smallest number that x could be is 0. And so x has to be bigger than 0. It can't even equal to 0 because, well, that wouldn't really be a box, now would it? So this is your height constraint. Your length constraint is obviously also your length has to be bigger than 0. If we bring the 60 to the other side, you're going to get a negative 60. And when you divide each side by negative 2 to get x by itself, 
this guy flips the other way. That's just um, a rule for inequalities. And so you get x has to be less than 30. You do the same thing with your width. Bring the 30 to the other side, start solving. When you divide by a negative number, it's going to flip your sign the other way. So we now have to consolidate all three of these restrictions. And I do that with um, a number line. So let's just say that this is 0. Um, you know, you got negative 1. This is going to be positive 1. Actually, let's make it nice big numbers, like we'll say 15, 15. This is going to be 30. This will be negative 30. OK, let's talk about the first constraint. So x has to be bigger than 0. That means it's anything with an open circle going this way, bigger than 0, right? The next one, which is x has to be less than 30, means I'm just going to draw this above. I hope this makes sense. You're not going to include the 30, but it has to be everything below 30. So anything right there. Drawing this guy, x has to be less than 15, means that it's starting from 15 and going down this way forever. So where exactly are all three of those lines overlapping? Because that's where it meets all three conditions at the same time. So that is right here. Notice that all three lines actually match right there. Like you only have two over here and you only have two over here, right? So all three lines, all three conditions are okay right in this region. And so we say the constraints that satisfy all three of your dimensions is anywhere between 0 and 15 and not including 0 or 15. So if we ever find an x value, we have to check to make sure that it actually is between those two numbers. OK, so we've dealt with our maximum. We've dealt with our constraints. Let's actually do the solution now. Taking our volume formula, from our maximum part, we're then going to take the derivative with respect to x. Okay, so I already had the derivative for you, 12x squared minus 360x plus 1,800. Set it equal to 0 and start solving for x. So you have a quadratic. I would probably, I mean, like dot, 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 there's some steps that are missing, obviously. I'd either factor or do the quadratic formula. And since there's decimals, I'm going to assume that I did the quadratic formula. I got two answers, and we want to compare, make sure that those guys fit within the domains. And so remember that the constraints was x has to be anywhere between 0 and 15. And so notice that I've already crossed one off because it's way too big. That means that our critical value is 6.34. That means that the largest volume happens when x is 6.34. But we want to just make sure, again, that it is a maximum. Like We don't really know just looking at it. And just because the question said that you have a maximum volume doesn't necessarily mean that you found a maximum. You could have made a mistake somewhere. So we want to take this guy, our first derivative, and do the second derivative. So doing the second derivative, we get something like this. Take your critical value and sub it into your x. And so we say d2 over, sorry, d2 um, by v over dx2. And this is where I'm suggesting, I'm giving you also an extra note that x is going to be 6.34. The way that we write that is pretty much, I mean, like, it's kind of like the same as writing it like this, 6.34. Same thing. All right, so we're going to sub 6.34 into our second derivative, and we get a very negative number. So since it's negative, it's a concave down. You get a max, which proves that, ta-da, we have a max. Okay, maximum volume, and it's happening when your x is 6.34. In these types of questions, I also just want to check the domain. Uh, the 0 and the 15, what happens if we also sub those into the actual formula. So checking to see if even at the endpoints, is there another maximum volume? You know, like maybe this guy is actually just a local max and not an absolute max. We just want to check. 
And so we take those domains and we also sub them into the equation. So your volume equation, subbing in zero, we end up getting zero. So that should make sense. If our uh, domain, um, sorry, if our constraint of x starts at zero, then you don't really have a box if your x is zero. So there should be no volume taking what we had as our critical value and subbing that into our, our volume equation, we get 5,196 centimeters cubed. And then taking the 15 and subbing it in, we get that zero again, which we don't want. Okay, and so we know that, well, obviously this guy is our max volume. That's not what they asked for in the question though. So if you had just stopped there, you wouldn't get full marks. They asked you what the dimensions are. So remember, your dimensions are your x, okay, that was your height, right? They asked you what your length is, and so sub your 6.34 into your x and solve for the length, and then also your width. And again, sub in the 6.34 that you found, solve for your width. In a therefore statement, list off all three dimensions, your um, height, your length, and your width with your unit centimeters. And if you want to, you can be extra and uh, write down your largest volume. Okay. <laughs> I know, crazy, right? You're looking at this like jaws dropping to the floor. I'll try my best to explain it. It is kind of tricky, um, but yeah, all we can do is do our best, right? Example number five. A cylinder is inscribed inside a sphere of radius eight. Okay, so that its top and bottom touch the sphere along the circular edge. What are the dimensions of the cylinder with a maximum volume? Okay, so we need a volume formula and we're going to do the derivative, set it equal to zero, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so they want the dimensions and what is that volume? Okay, um, let's start looking at the diagram on the right hand side. This gives us an idea of what they're talking about. So the rightmost diagram is saying, here's a sphere. They want to shove like a can inside of it, so a cylinder, and it's got a touch at the edges. So that's going to give you your maximum. All right, now we have several sets of radiuses. Um, they have the radius of the sphere, which we're going to call R. And so you see it's actually dictated right here in the middle to the corner of the sphere. And so they call that capital R. We also have a little radius, and so there's like a little radius right here, and that is the radius of the um, cylinder. Notice that they're not the same. Okay, so that guy's right here, and that is your little r. All right, they also have a height, and so that's this guy right here, and that's the height, I don't know if you can see that, that's the height of the cylinder itself. Okay, so that's this part. I think the middle diagram is everything on the left hand side diagram but without those green rounded lines and so you still have your height which is here okay h you have your little radius of your cylinder and then you also have the large radius which is also the slant of a right angle triangle right there okay so it's your hypotenuse all right, so let's go over the let statements. Let big R represent the radius of the sphere. They told us what that is. And so the radius is actually eight. And they said inside the sphere. So that must be big R. Let little r represent the radius of the cylinder and then H represent the height of the cylinder. We want to maximize the cylinder. And so notice that at the bottom, I have pi R squared H, which is the volume of a cylinder. We can't take the derivative, we have too many letters. We have R's and H's. Now in order to solve for one and uh, put it in terms of another letter, what I decided to do is use the cross section and the Pythagorean theorem. So um, do you see, let me write that right. Here, do you guys see this? Okay, so there's my Pythagorean theorem. I'm gonna say, and you can just take a look at that. All right, I'm gonna go up and slide back down again in a second. 
r squared plus h over 2 squared plus 8 squared. So this is a Pythagorean theorem. Let's just talk about where it came from. Little r squared, okay, so little r squared plus, um, I think it was h over 2. So that makes sense because, like, you want, no, same color as I was using because I'm OCD like that. This guy right here is going to be your h over 2, and then obviously you want to square it. Okay, and then that's going to become your r squared, which is 8 squared. Okay, so all parts of that are right here. All right. Now working with that a little bit, I'm going to get r by itself so that I can get rid of this r and put this guy instead. So let's just take a look at what happened. Um, we squared our r. We did h squared over 4. And so I put the 1 over 4 as a coefficient on the outside. And then the square of 8 is obviously 64. So if I want r by itself, you're going to bring all of this to the other side and then square root everything. OK, so are we good with how we got that final part? Looking at the constraints, OK, let's do H and then we'll do R. OK, taking a look at H. H is your height. The very smallest it could be is 0, and it can't even be 0. It can be 0 0.1 or something super small. Uh, like you'd have a really tiny, tiny, very thin, very flat cylinder. Um, so it can't be 0, but the very highest it can be looks like, I mean, think about like the radius right here. If we put it this way, isn't that the radius, right, of the sphere? And so if we put it this way as well, that's also the radius of the sphere. And each of these is 8. So really, like, h has to be between 0 and 8. Sorry, not 0 and 8. Ah, I didn't write that. 0 and blah, how do you write this? 16. There you go. <laughs> That's not very neat at all. Okay, so the height, the very longest the height can be is the very top to the very bottom of the sphere. It would be a super tall, thin um, cylinder, but it could be as tall as 8 and 8, which is 16. All right, but the very smallest it can be is 0. So we have, and I apologize for sliding up and down, right here. OK, now let's check out the radius of the cylinder, 0 to 8. This guy obviously can't be um, 0, but it can be as small as 0, not exactly 0. And the longest it could be is your radius. So remember, your radius is going to be 8 all the way up to here, which is also 8. And so that entire part from here to here is 16, which means this guy has to be, I mean, the max it could be is half of that, which is going to be 8. So anywhere between 0 and 8. So those are my two constraints on my h and my r. Let's get through the solution now. OK, taking my volume equation, getting rid of the r, because now we have something to replace it. And I have only h's, so I have h's and v's. I can get rid of the square root and the squared, make it a little bit easier. OK, now we just have a nice round 64 minus 1 over 4 h squared. Okay, and then opening that up, because it makes it a lot easier to do the derivative if there's no brackets, you can take your pi and multiply it in. Also take your h and also multiply that in. Okay, so you get 64 pi h minus 1 over 4 pi h cubed. All right, that's your volume formula. Let's take the derivative. This is just a coefficient, and so when you take the derivative of h, so dv with respect to dh, okay, you're going to get rid of the h itself, and you're still going to have the coefficient. 
This is going to come down and multiply the entire coefficient, and so you get 3 over 4 pi and subtract 1, so h squared. Set it equal to 0 and solve for h. Okay, so bringing all of this to the other side becomes a positive. Divide each side by 3 over 4 pi, so divide the side by 3 over 4 pi, gets rid of those guys. Divide this by 3 over 4 pi. And so I've simplified it. It's just going to be 256 over 3. Then you're going to square root and you get a positive negative 16 over root 3. But we did say that there was a restriction. The, like there, um, the height, sorry, I want to say horizontal asymptote for some reason. H has to be between 0 and 16. Okay, so you can't actually have that negative number. It is not possible. All right. So you're only going to get an answer of 16 over root 3, which is approximately 9.23. So you have a max or a min happening at that critical value. I would take the derivative and do the derivative again, do the second derivative, in order to find out if you actually indeed have a maximum. So do a second derivatives test. Sub your h, which is 9.23, into your h. Okay, so taking the derivative at a certain number, summing it in, and getting a negative number. Negative number means concave down, so then you have a maximum. All right, so you have your maximum volume when your height is 9.23. And I forget if they were talking about centimeters or meters. They asked you for the dimensions, and they want the maximum volume. So the other dimension that you do have to find for your cylinder is your radius. And you had a radius formula before, so you're just going to sub in your h, which was 9 point whatever, <laughs> back in and square it. So this was actually um, what you had originally over right here before you actually square rooted it. So I just put that back in there again so that we don't have like approximation dots everywhere. Okay, and I solve for r. So my radius for my cylinder is 6.53. Having the radius and your height, putting it back into the volume formula, I can find the maximum volume now with my two dimensions. I can check the domain ends. And so I just wanted to check with um, the 0 and the 16, so the height numbers. Um, I think you can also check with your radius numbers as well. But you'll notice that with all the work that you've done, you should be pretty confident that the 9.23 for your height actually created a maximum volume. Okay, And so you're going to say, the dimensions of the cylinder with the maximum volume of 1,238.22 centimeters cubed was the radius of 6.53 centimeters and a height of 9.23 centimeters. So we've listed our, um, our dimensions and then we've also said what the maximum volume was. Okay, so that is it for this video. Um, notice that Again, very similar to the last video. The hardest part is just creating the equations. And um, I don't even think it's the, the derivatives anymore. Um, it's just creating the equations from the actual diagram. If you have any questions, because the diagram is a little bit tricky for this one, just let me know in the comment section below. Have a great day, guys.